D-Rock and Kane, better known as the Yin Yang Twins, helped put Atlanta and crunk music on the hip-hop scene. The Dirty South duo became the kings of gentlemen club music and for their trademark. <laughs> With their wild and high-energy performances, they drew attention away from their disabilities and became a platinum-selling group. Sadly, their time at the top gave us whiplash as their celebrity status quickly declined. At the same time, D-Rock has faced some serious personal issues throughout the years. Juicy, tender, and packed with so much flavor. Check out our new selection of brisket beef jerky, available in lemon pepper, smoky Texas barbecue, volcanic jalapeno, and more. Visit rrgsnacks.com to purchase a bag, or two, or three. D'Angelo D-Rock Holmes got signed to a record label, and in 1995, when he was just 16 years old, he teamed up with rapper Diamond for a song called Bankhead Bounce. That same year, he released a solo album called Inglewood for Life. By that point, D-Rock and fellow rapper Eric Jackson Jr., better known as Kane, were familiar with each other and knew a lot of the same people in the Atlanta hip-hop scene. One day, while walking to the store, D-Rock and Kane bumped into each other. D-Rock expressed to Kane that he wasn't really interested in rapping anymore, but he had to record one more album before he could get released from his contract. Kane told Bihai ATL that he suggested they buy some notebooks from the store and start writing lyrics so D-Rock could complete his album. Me and D-Rock sat on the, the porch and wrote 17 records. He was looking at me like, why you be writing like that? I said, yeah, come on, let's put, play another beat. Play another yep. beat. The album D-Rock and the Too Tight Click, True Dogs, was released in 1997, and Kane was featured on nine of the tracks. D-Rock booked shows for them around the city. Even though he was still a teenager, he was focused and dedicated. It also helped that Kane was his perfect match, not because they had amazing chemistry and a mutual love for Chevys, but because they bonded over their disabilities. D-Rock's left hand didn't fully develop when he was in the womb. And as for Kane, he was born with cerebral palsy, which makes him limp when he walks. Kane told Vide magazine, I got picked on growing up, and I'd be lying if I said the stuff that was said to either of us about our disabilities didn't hurt our feelings. They decided to join forces, and they named themselves the Yin Yang Twins, based on the Chinese symbols for light and dark. Kane told Dance Mogul they promoted themselves for three years without much notice. And D-Rock said people kept telling them to remain patient, but he was growing frustrated and wanted immediate success. Things finally paid off when DJ Smurf, who later became known as Mr. Kali Park, stepped in and helped mold them into what he thought the music world needed. His plan was for the Yin Yang Twins to sell intimacy over up-tempo crunk beats. Kane was a bit hesitant because he preferred to rap about serious topics, but he told Vibe magazine he knew that by following Mr. Kali Park's plan, the Yin Yang Twins would gain the attention they deserved. So he decided he would go along with it. He figured he would just play the role that would help them sell records, even though it was far from who he was as a person. The Yin Yang Twins' distinctive sound helped popularize the crunk movement, which was synonymous with Southern rap. They were loud, in your face, growling, yelling, and screaming, and the world ate it up. They never hid the fact that they were disabled, but they rarely rapped about it or discussed it in interviews. And what people didn't realize was the way they acted on stage and during interviews was a distraction technique. Vibe magazine reported their boisterous behavior was a way for them to keep the focus off their disabilities and physical deformities. It's kind of hard to notice someone's underdeveloped hand when they're shouting and bouncing around on stage, right? The Yin Yang Twins went on to create some of the best booty clapping music ever, from Whistle While You Twerk to Wait, The Whisper Song, and Salt Shaker, to name a few. 
They've collaborated with artists like Lil Jon and the Eastside Boys, Mike Jones, Pitbull, Flo Rida, and Britney Spears. And they have released several mixtapes, gold records, and multiple platinum albums, including Me and My Brother and United States of Atlanta. They even had a cameo in the 2004 film Soul Plane. And then came a little bit of drama. In 2004, the duo appeared on an episode of MTV Cribs. The popular program was all about stars showing off their beautiful mansions. The only problem was the Ying Yang twins were clearly filming in a home that wasn't theirs. It was decorated with sailboats and awkward paintings, and it appeared that the rappers were touring the home for the first time as the cameras rolled. Then we got the painting. When I see these, I said, I gotta get them. They were still at the top of their game though, and they were making more money than ever. So D-Rock decided it was time to treat himself. In an interview with the East Valley Tribune, he revealed he owned 10 cars, and most of them were old school Chevys. While they experienced fame, which they had worked so hard to achieve, problems emerged. Disney wasn't too pleased that the duo used a sample of the Snow White song in their track, Whistle While You Twerk. According to sources, Disney sent the Ying Yang twins and their label a cease and desist letter, which prompted the group to leave their label behind and sign with Koch Records. In 2006, after the release of their lackluster fifth album entitled Chemically Imbalanced, Mr. Collie Park decided it was time to move on from their partnership. He told Double XL he needed to move on from D-Rock and Kane because he was neglecting his other artists. After Mr. Collie Park's departure, the Ying Yang twins continued to make music, but they lost their momentum. D-Rock and Kane were talented on their own, but Mr. Collie Park added that special sauce that made their music a hit. Without him, their songs slipped from the top of the charts. And then, D-Rock started to make headlines, but for all the wrong reasons. In June 2012, he was pulled over in Gwinnett County for failure to stay in one lane. According to MTV, D-Rock told authorities he had a few beers at a friend's house and had smoked substances. They also found pills in the car. If being under the influence while driving wasn't bad enough, his three-year-old and two-month-old children were asleep in the back seat. D-Rock was locked up for DUI, possession, and child endangerment. It soon became more apparent that D-Rock was facing financial issues as well. By 2013, he was divorced and his income had decreased from $19,000 per month to a little under $3,000 per month. According to TMZ, he told a judge he could no longer afford to pay his ex-wife $2,500 a month in child support because he had five other children that he needed to take care of. The judge cut him a break by lowering his payment to $550 a month and putting him on a payment plan to repay $45,000 in back child support. In November 2013, he was back in the press for putting his hands on a woman named Portia Holmes, who was identified as his wife. According to TMZ, he was locked up and agreed to stay away from her. During his April 2014 day in court, he copped a deal and received one year of probation. TMZ reported he was also ordered to perform community service, abstain from substances and alcohol, and most importantly, he was ordered to keep his hands to himself. After that incident, D-Rock seemed to make some positive changes as he put his focus back on his career. He and Kane worked on separate projects before teaming up for the Millennium Tour. And according to their Instagram account, they're joining the 2021 Millennium Tour as well. In April 2021, they teamed up with one of their favorite collaborators, Lil Jon, for the song Throw That featuring Queendom Come. The track is proof that crunk music is still alive. The Yin Yang Twins moment at the top is a reminder of an exciting time in hip-hop music, and D-Rock is well aware of the impact and legacy he and Kane will leave behind. He told Music Link Up, I love music. I'm not doing it for a buck. I make legendary songs that last forever. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below, and thanks for watching RRG.